So the objective of this webinar is that you know we're going to stay focused on what quality core tools are and uh, how and where to apply the quality core tools. So quality core tools, um, in other words, um, it, it sometimes they call them automotive core tools. Um, starts with APQP, Advanced Product Quality Planning and Control Plans. Um, it decreases the complexity of product quality planning for customers and the suppliers. PPAP production part approval process ensures engineering design and customer product specific requirements are met. FEMA or FMEA failure mode and effects analysis is a risk assessment tool used to identify and address potential failure modes in, in, in products and the in processes. Measurement system analysis, MSA, warrants the organizations to evaluate their quality measurement systems, which in return provide better product quality. Finally, the SPC, Statistical Process Control. SPC describes several basic and advanced statistical methods to ensure process improvements are as effective as possible. Before talking about uh, APQP's connection to quality, let me define what APQP is about. APQP is a structured methodology to proactively mitigate design and process risks. It also ensures that the quality products can be produced by a capable production system at the intended production rate. So having said that, APQP begins with the end goal of satisfying our customers. So in order for us to satisfy our customers, we must deliver uh, quality products on time. Well, in order for us to um, deliver quality products on time, production must happen uh, as planned 100% of the time. In order for production to happen, as planned 100% of the time, we must have producible products and capable processes. In order to have the producible products and capable processes, we must have robust designs with acceptable risks. In order for us to have the uh, robust design with acceptable risk, we must apply the principles of APQP. So APQP helps to develop and produce quality products that satisfy our, satisfy our customers. Where do we apply APQP? APQP can be applied to new product development, existing product design revisions, work transfers and sourcing changes, critical items at any level of a product structure. A special note here is that in general, APQP is not applied to standard parts or to cuts, also known as commercial off-the-shelf items. Some, some of the benefits of APQP APQP identifies and mitigates major design and production risks early in the process. It validates a product, uh, fulfills the design requirements, and the production system is capable of producing conforming product at a rate. Leverages proven industry standards for use in the development process and throughout the supply chain. And finally, documents and retains the organizational knowledge to accelerate the design and development learning curve. APQP proactively mitigates and validates designs are producible at rate. 
These are the phases of APQP. As I mentioned earlier, there are five phases. The planning phase, product design and development, process design and development, product and process validation, and finally, production. And then you see that this loop right here at the bottom is called the feedback assessment and corrective action. So while we're going through the five phases of APQP, we continuously uh, look into feedbacks, just receive the assessment made and corrective action. So let me get into some of a little bit more detail about each phase. If what's the fa um, uh, phase, what, which is the planning phase? Some of the key inputs to planning phase um, are included voice of the customers through market research, historical warranty, and quality information or team experience, business plan marketing strategy, product process benchmark data, product process assumptions, product reliability studies, and customer inputs. So when we receive these inputs, we are expected to deliver the design goals, reliability and quality goals, preliminary listing of special product and process characteristics, preliminary bill of materials, the bombs, preliminary process flow chart, product assurance plan, and management support, including the program timing and planning for resources and staffing support required capacity. So a few uh, key milestones that we expect out of this uh, planning phase, the product concept is finalized, the pre-design is available, and finally, all applicable activities and deliverables specified by the project plan for phase one are completed. When we, in phase two, the product and uh, des product design and development. So before I go to this um, phase, just keep in mind that all the outputs in phase one becomes input in phase two. So no need to repeat those. So again, because the phases are in, uh, connected to one another, so all the outputs of uh, phase one becomes inputs in phase two. So using those inputs, outputs, uh, we expect our DFEMA, the Design Failure Mode and Effects Analysis, DFMA, Design for Manufacturability and Assembly, Design Verification, Design Reviews, Prototype Build Control Plan, Engineering Drawings, uh, New Equipment Tool and Facilities Requirement, Gauges, or testing equipment requirements and so on and so forth. The key milestones expected out of this phase are design record and BOM, design verification and validation plans, and again, all applicable activities and the deliverables specified by the project plan for phase two are completed. While we're in this phase, one of the key tools that we're using is called a DFEMA or design failure mode and effects analysis. So um, DFEMA is a structured method for analyzing risk by ranking and documenting the potential failure modes in a design. The analysis includes identification of potential failures and their effects, ranking of factors, um, severity occurrence detectability, and identification um, and the results of actions to reduce or eliminate risk. The purpose of this tool is to assist in the identification of critical items, as well as design and process key characteristics. Prioritize actions, uh, action plans for mitigating risks. And finally, serve as a uh, repository for, for lessons learned. You're, depending on the industry you're in, you may actually find out, you know, each industry is using slightly different uh, form. This is one of the uh, the forms that we use in um, uh, for DFEMA. As you can see, there is this title block where we have a gen uh, general information about the product we're developing, um, the drawing number and this and that, and then also the DFEMA uh, number, the original date that it was developed, and the the revision dates. Those need to be all capped. And then the um, 
the actual form itself, it starts with a function, sorry, the item, and then the function from there, uh, the, the requirements that it has to meet. And then we start with potential failure modes, the effects of those failure modes, severity, um, classification, like if we have any KCs, key characteristics uh, or not, um, then potential cause of the failure mode, current uh, design prevention controls, then we, we have uh, occurrence rating in this column, current detection uh, controls, the detection rating, then we have uh, severity times occurrence, uh, which is a criticality, uh, and also the RPN risk prior number, which is the uh, the product of severity, occurrence, and detection. So depending, so we use the RPN risk priority number to prioritize the risks, and um, and we um, uh, we we need to mitigate those high risks of potential failure modes or the cause of the failure modes through recommended actions and um, the person who is responsible for that recommended action. There's a target date and actions taken and effective date of that. And then plus we now, as soon as we monitor the, uh, the recommended actions implementation for a while, then we have to re-rate the RPN, uh, severity occurrence and detection, and then the RPN overall to see where we were and how much we reduced that uh, risk. So that's a high level overview of the form itself. Phase three, process design and development. As I said before, now the inputs here are coming from the output of phase two. Um, the, the expected outputs in this phase are packaging standards and specifications, product process quality system review, process flow chart, floor plan layout, characteristics matrix, PFEMA, the process failure mode effects analysis, pre-launch control plan, process instructions, the measurement system analysis plan, preliminary process capability study plan, and again, management support. The key milestones here are production process is defined and deployed, successful completion of the PRR, and all applicable activities and deliverables specified by the project plan for phase three are completed. Um, while we're in the phase three, as I said, PFEMA is one of the key documents, uh, key tools that we're going to have to uh, develop. Um, the PFEMA is also a structured method for analyzing the process risk by ranking and documenting the potential failure modes within the process. The purpose here is to assist in the identification and evaluation of critical items and the key characteristics. Prioritize action plans for mitigating risk, serve as a basis for continuous improvement, become a repository for, for lessons learned, and finally, help develop preventive maintenance plans. This is, a, a again, one of the templates you can find out there that, uh, that can be used as, uh, as a PFEMA. Again, very similar to DFEMA, it starts with the title block, I call it, the overall information about the product itself. And then the bottom here from the blue and down is the actual uh, form where it starts with process operation, process step, description, requirement, failure modes, effects of those failure modes, severity rating, classification, potential causes of, the, of the failure, current prevention controls, uh, occurrence rating, current process detection controls, um, a detection rating, severity times occurrence, which is criticality, and the RPN risk prior to number. Um, again, the, uh, we use RPN to um, the list, the, uh, the prioritize the risks, and then act, act accordingly through the recommended actions, responsibility, target date, actions taken, effective date. Then after, again, monitoring the, um, the recommended action for a while, we have to recalculate the severity occurrence and detection and um, um, to come up with a new uh, or action resulted uh, RPN. Keep in mind that, uh, and it's for both uh, DFEMA and the PFEMA, 
the severity rating can only be changed through, uh, through uh, design change. So if recommended action did not involve any design change, we don't expect severity to be uh, changed. So we will use the same severity as before. Phase four, the product and the process validation. Um, I'm going to stay focus on the outputs again, since uh, we talked about inputs as the output of phase three. The, uh, the outputs are significant production run, measurement system evaluations, preliminary process capability study, production part approval process, production validation testing, packaging evaluation, production control plan, quality planning sign-off and management support. Key milestones, validation that the intended manufacturing process and the associated product conform to specified requirements. Approved first article inspection, approved PPAP. Um, all applicable activities and the deliverables specified by the project plan for phase four are completed. Control plan is one of the tools that we use in this phase. Um, it's a documented description that links manufacturing process steps to key inspection and control activities. The purpose of control plan is to control the design characteristics and process variables to ensure product quality. It actually gets initiated in phase three and finalized in phase four. It includes the identification of product features and process control settings to be monitored, measurement methods to be used, sampling sizes and the frequencies along with associated control limits, reaction plans when the process becomes unstable or when a failure occurs, and finally, identification of responsible parties. And here is a um, section of the form. Again, it starts with the title block, um, and then the actual, uh, the form starts with the process step, process description, machine device jigs or tools for manufacturing, product characteristics, process characteristics, classification, um, product process specification or tolerance, uh, part of the methods, along with evaluation measurement technique, the sample size, the frequency, then the control method, and finally, reaction plan. Measurement system analysis is another one that we uh, um, we use. Um, it's a set of entities such as gauges, standard operation methods, software, personal, personnel, environment uh, used in the combination to take a measurement of products, product characteristics, and process KCs. The purpose of MSA is to quantify the variation introduced by the measurement system so that the accurate inferences and informed decisions are made. Take corrective actions as required and reduce the measurement system error to modify the tolerances. Key areas uh, to assess include the precision, which is repeatability and um, reproducibility, and accuracy, which is uh, resolution, bias, stability, and linearity. And the measurement system, here is a, a, a great chart that I always share. The, if you think about the, um, the dotted curve here, representing an actual process variation, um, we may actually end up having production gauge variation that are these small curves on both sides of the tail. If you add those to the actual process variation, the red is the one that we observe, which is, we call it observed process variation. So we want these uh, production gauge variation as small as possible. As a matter of fact, we expect that to be less than 10%. Source of variation, I know this is very um, um, 
BZ chart here. It's if you think of it as a cause and effect diagram or fishbone, here is your um, the effect is the measurement system variability. Some of the key, as as I said before, environment uh, key causes potential key causes of the variation would come from environment, person, appraiser, standard workpiece or the part and the uh, gauge itself. Again, without going into it any more detail than that. So there are a bunch of uh, potential causes that can drive the measurement system um, a variation, uh, you know, larger than expected that will actually uh, cause people to make wrong decisions. Okay, APQB phase five, ongoing production. Um, the key outputs here in this phase are reduced variation, improved customer satisfaction, improved delivery and service, and finally, effective use of lessons learned or best practices. The key milestones we expect are continuous improvement in feedback and project closure. In phase five activities, um, we, we actually do process monitoring through a SPC, statistical process control, and um, the problem solving, there, there's a very common uh, problem solving tool we use, it's called 8D. Uh, continuous improvement, we could utilize uh, Six Sigma uh, concept to reduce the variation as part of continuous improvement. Uh, and the knowledge management, uh, we can build the uh, case study libraries, D FEMAs and the P FEMAs and all that um, to be used for future products. Okay, so how does PPAP relate to APQP? The, the production part approval process is an output of APQP providing objective evidence of product conformity and production process capability. And there are 18 PPAP requirements in automotive, and there are actually only 11 requirements in aerospace. So those 18 requirements are listed as design records, authorized engineering change documents, customer engineering approval, design failure, modern effects analysis, process flow diagrams, PFMOs, control plans, MSAs, dimensional results, records of material performance test results, initial process studies, qualified lab documentation, appearance approval report, sample production part, master sample, checking aids, customer specific requirements, and finally, part submission warrant. The organization um, shall submit items and or records specified in the levels, uh, the five different levels. The level one is warrant only, which means um, designated appearance items and AAR submitted to customer. Level two, warrant with product samples and limited supporting data submitted to customer. Level three, warrant with product samples and complete supporting data submitted to the customer. Level four is the warrant and other requirements as defined by the customer. And level five is the warrant with product samples and complete supporting data reviewed at the organization's manufacturing site. As a side note here, level three as the, as the default for all submissions unless otherwise specified by the customer. PPAP uh, status, upon approval of the submission, the organization shall assure that the future production continues to meet all customer requirements. For those organizations that have been classified as self-certifying or PPAP level one by a specific customer, submission of the requested required organization the approved documentation will be considered as customer approval. PPAP status has three different 
um, a solution or uh, responses. One is called approved, interim approval, and rejected. So what is approved? Part or material, including all subcomponents, meets all customer requirements. Organization is authorized to ship production quantities of the product based on the customer's scheduling. As for the interim approval, permits shipment of material for production requirements on a limited time or piece of quantity basis. This will only be granted when the organization has clearly defined the non-conformances, sorry, non-compliances, preventing the approvals prepared an action plan agreed upon by the customer. And finally, PPAP resubmission is required to obtain the full approval. What's, what's rejected mean then? The PPAP submission does not meet customer requirements based on the production lot from which it was taken and or accompanying documentation. So the organization cannot ship parts to the customer 